the biggest Titan project in YouTube history is back. I'm building an Imperator Titan at 40k scale, a skyscraper sized walking war machine that will stand over 7 feet tall when it's completed. If you're just tuning in for the first time, let me get you caught up. In previous episodes, I took a deep dive into Warhammer lore to determine the correct size for this project, and I made a rough plan. The Imperator Titan has never had a model before in Warhammer 40k, but it did have one in the old tiny scale Epic 40k game. So I assembled one of those Epic Titans, and we'll be using that as a rough guide for this build. Since then, I've made the two massive legs, each of which is a fortress bastion in their own right, capable of housing a huge amount of Imperial Guardsmen or Skitari. But there's tons left to do, so let's jump in right where we left off. With the basic shape of the two legs completed, I needed to make a structural frame inside this beast to support the weight of the whole finished Titan. My original plan when I started this Titan in New Jersey was to use PVC piping, but after moving to Canada where the building codes are different, I decided to go for a mix of PVC and ABS piping. As a layman, as far as I can tell, the difference is that PVC pipes are white and ABS pipes are black. Uh, there's probably more to it than that, but whatever. In the last video, I made this quite large wooden base. I screwed some half inch square sheets of plywood into the base to disperse the weight and also raise up the feet a little bit so I can cover the rest of the base in one inch foam and make it have a little bit of relief when it's done. I bolted in this metal flange that my PVC pipes screw into, making a really solid connection. After cutting a little clearance on the bottom of the leg pieces, they slot right down over the flange and sit flush on the plywood. Hell yeah. Time for the hips. For whatever reason, Warhammer models always have really weird hips, and the Imperator Titan is no exception. Its hips have this huge axle-like piece that gives it a bow-legged appearance. I'm going to make the structural piece for this out of some PVC pipe fittings. Rather than using corner pieces, I'd use these sanitary tees, and you'll see why in just a moment. So I had to learn a lot about pipes to make sure this whole thing didn't just fall apart, so let's talk briefly about how plumbers join pieces together securely. Basically, they use pipe cement. If you're watching this video, there's a good chance that you've built a plastic model kit before, and the principle is basically the same as plastic cement. The pipe cement melts the surface of the pipe, and when you join the pieces together, the cement melted surfaces cure up, creating a solid bond between them. The active ingredient in these pipe cements are industrial solvents. I'm no chemist, but I do know enough to know that I don't want to breathe this stuff, so I wore an approved respirator and did this in the garage. So the inside of a pipe fitting has a bit of an angle to it. So when you push the pieces together, the square end of the pipe will push all the glue down to the end, making a weaker bond, unless you chamfer the end of the pipe using a file or grinder. I'm sure there are qualified plumbers laughing at my chamfering technique right now, but just remember this is for a model, and the good news is at least I won't flood my house with sewage if I screw this up. So with my pieces chamfered and cleaned, I'm ready to glue. Before applying the cement, I add a generous coat of purple primer which softens and prepares the surfaces for the cement. Kinda nerve wracking doing this for the first time on camera. I'm sure it'll work out. I apply a nice bead of pipe cement on top of the purple primer. While that's still wet, I push the pieces together, making a quarter turn as I push them down, and then using quite a bit of force, I hold the pieces together while the glue dries. The chemical reaction creates a bit of heat and tries to force the pieces apart, so doing this ensures the joint stays solid. And there it is. I chamfer, prime, and glue several more times, and I get this nice hip axle piece. Here you'll see why I went with the sanitary bend instead of the corner pieces on the edge. The weight of the whole upper body will be pushing down on this one joint, so leaving the ends open allows me to reinforce this part with a smaller gauge of pipe. It's important to note here that I'm mixing ABS with PVC now, and bonding these two different materials requires a different glue, which I did use. I framed up the torso in sort of a boxy shape with some ABS piping, all glued together the same way I just went over. There's no point in going too far in depth into that, but suffice to say this frame shape will support the upper platform that the Imperator has on its back. When added to the hips, you get this right here which my brother Kirk will now demonstrate. <laughs> so when all of that was dry and stopped smelling like chemicals, I brought it back inside. You can start to see now how massive this thing is gonna be. Hell yeah. So let's add some thickness to this skinny skeleton. 
I'm going to start by making some templates on chipboard and using a compass to get some nice swooping curves. The Epic Imperator Titan I have has some pieces with these sort of curves and while I won't be directly copying the design of this thing, I do want it to have the same general feeling. Sort of uh, my own take on a tribute of this piece. When I have two copies of a shape cut out on the chipboard, I use push pins to attach them to some 2 inch insulation foam and then cut that out with a hot wire cutter. Which is very relaxing to do, by the way. When you remove the template, you have the shape you're looking for and you can reuse the templates as many times as you want, which is perfect for something that has symmetry, for example, and you want to make two copies. So using those two pieces, I start to build a rough structure for the hips. A third piece adds a platform on the top that the body will be able to rest on. By removing the pelvis and reinforcing it with a ton of cocktail sticks, I make a surprisingly strong base that can stand up on its own on a table, which will of course pay dividends when I detail it later. As you can see, I didn't glue the waist piece or the tops of the hips. This is what will allow me to take this thing apart for transport, storage, etc. in the future as necessary. Now with the hips blocked in, I continue upwards, making some curved pieces for the lower torso and supporting the PVC frame with carefully cut pieces of foam. The idea here is that by using the foam, I'll prevent the piece from being able to wiggle free from the joint. It also allows the whole torso to pivot, giving the piece its first point of articulation, which is pretty cool. Removing the torso and flipping it upside down, I add some giant curved pieces that will visually support the platform that the cathedral-like top sits on. I add some more foam to hide the PVC frame and create a flat surface on the top. When I added these pieces, I started to really get excited. The way that this thing sort of curve over gives the impression of being under like a giant bridge or something. Like this isn't just a vehicle. This is just architecture that's about to walk up on you. Nice. So for the top of this thing, I used a piece of 3mm masonite, 2 feet by 3 feet, which is, incidentally, bigger than the size of a regular kill team table. I've talked before about my plans to play games on this bad boy, and this is making it feel pretty doable. I did trim down the size of the platform, though, giving it a more interesting shape. Rather than hauling this thing out to the garage to use some power tools, I just cut through the masonite with this Tamiya tool that's one of my new favorite things. It can gouge a really gnarly furrow in pretty much anything with just a few passes. The Imperator has this weird little room where it's belly in, so I cut some angled pieces of foam to make a half a decagon, cut a half foam dome, and blocked out the little room. Now when this is done, I'll put some more intricate windows in here, maybe even some lights, but for now, I'll cut an arch into each piece using the same template method as before. And it looks like this. So I couldn't resist wanting to see what this thing looks like with a head. And to make sure I was on the right track, I mocked up a basic head and neck shape with a foam ball and some foam scraps. It looks, it looks pretty bogus, but seeing it in place, still really cool. So I support the platform with a few pieces of pine select so it doesn't get all floppy and sloppy where it overhangs the supports. But without adding too much weight. Now apart from the base, this whole thing is still surprisingly light. I added a bunch of foam strips and foam core to make the base level again, giving it a 1 inch thickness. At this point, I was getting super eager to just see the whole silhouette of this thing, so I blocked in some basic shapes for the buildings on top, I made some stand-in arms out of PVC pipe, and here's where it stands right now. Well guys, here it is so far. As you can see, it's absolutely bananas. I, I'm like, I'm at a loss for words. It's so big and badass and really, really cool. And if you put a space marine on there, he's like a little speck. It's absolutely perfect. It reminds me in all the right ways of the coolest illustrations I've seen, where there's plenty of room up on the top to have your little guys running around pew, 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 you know what I'm saying? Overall, the size feels right to me. You know, I've gone in depth about why this is the right size many different times. I literally could not go any bigger because there's about a half inch of clearance between the top of these towers and the roof of my studio here. And um, yeah, as you can see, it's just shy of seven feet tall. I'm 4'11", and as you can see, it just towers over me. Um, so yeah, this is... I'm I'm stoked to death, man. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> oh, I'm like, I'm kind of freaking out. I'm kind of freaking out. Um, not freaking out about all the work ahead, but freaking out about how how bloody cool this is. 
and uh, I wish you guys could see it here in person. So maybe, I don't know, I'll wheel it out to uh, some sort of show or something in the future. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Cut that part, Eric, where I'm shaking my hips. That's embarrassing. Um, I'm my own editor, guys. I, uh, so you'll never see this. I think this head is approximately the right size. I'm gonna go a little bit bigger than that, and obviously it's gonna be much more detailed. Uh, in the final thing, I really want the head to be able to be opened up so you can see inside the cockpit where I'll have the Moderati, the Princeps, and uh, room for some visiting characters, kind of like in Hell's Reach where Grimaldus visits the cockpit of the Imperator. That was something that was always really important to me, so we're gonna do that. Look how tall this thing is. It's just so cool. It's just so cool. It's been just over a year since I started this project, and I mean, you can't say that it's not happening now, can you? Right? It's uh, the proof is in the pudding, or in the um, hundreds of dollars of XPS foam, rather. <laughs> um, yeah, guys, this project is actually kind of expensive, so if you want to support me on Patreon, that'd be super cool, and you can get your name on the final Titan as well. When it's done, there's going to be banners hanging from the guns, hanging from sort of like the loincloth area. There's going to be some engraved pieces um, on the interior. If you want to have your name listed on this Titan, then go sign up in my Patreon page down below. That'll be tight. And uh, yeah, a huge thank you to all my existing Patreons and uh, everybody who's been so patient and invested in this project. It's coming together, guys. It's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. If you guys are even half as excited as I am, then you guys must be pretty damn excited. And um, yeah, I can't wait to show you guys what comes next. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. We'll see you next time on Eric's Hobby Workshop.